In today's video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about carbon paper, which can be a lifesaver. Oh. And I'm also gonna talk about palette knives a little bit and how I use them. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna have gum. Yeah, she's gonna have gum. I'm having gum right now. <laughs> so, this is how I use carbon paper. First, I print out an extra reference photo, and it has to be the size I want. Then, as you can see, I just trace over the image with a pencil. I trace the things that are most important, like shapes, shadows, or lines, that I will want to be aware of as I'm painting. Using carbon paper is a very common practice. I have been drawing my whole life, and I'm good at it, but as I'm trying to learn to paint, I'd rather not have to worry about placement yet. If you don't have time to draw, or if you don't like to draw, or if you're just plain bad at drawing, then this is a perfectly acceptable way for you to ease your burden by a lot. If you're painting big, like on a larger canvas, then I don't really know what to tell you because I haven't done that yet, so. <laughs> The palette knife I like to use right now is very small and flexible. It's easier to mix smaller amounts of paint with a small knife, and since I'm painting small right now, it's perfect. I use it to pull out just the right amount of paint color that I need, and then I just mix until I think it's good. Then I can scoop up my paint and put it wherever I want. I also use the back of my knife to see if my color matches. So the way that I do this is I smear the back of my knife on the color that I've just mixed, making sure that it's covered. And I hold it up to my subject or reference photo. I squint my eyes to make sure the value is correct. In my opinion, the color doesn't have to be 100% perfect as long as the value is good. So why mix with a palette knife instead of your brush? Well, you save a ton of paint and you save your brush. Try it. Compare both and you'll see how much paint is wasted using your brush. And you'll see how much paint gets smushed up into your brush. Some people actually paint with their knives too, but I haven't tried much of that yet. I saw a really cool video of that once, so I'll try to find it and put a link in the comments below. So this image is one that I love because it's a picture of my son, Michael. This kid is so fun. He's my extremist. I love how this image just captures his joy and the humor he found in messily eating his ice cream on the beach one day.
picked this subject for its simplicity, but again, I was amazed at how much variation there was in his skin tones. I ended up blending quite a bit as I was applying my paint to the canvas, or I should say, wooden board. But I still wanted my brush strokes to look interesting, so I tried not to fuss too much either. I wanted it to look painterly and not like a photograph. Once I started adding the darker lines to his cheeks, I had to squint and step back a lot to make sure the values were correct. I don't know exactly how it works, but squinting seems to blur as well as desaturate things a bit, so all you're left with is the shadows or the lights and darks, and it helps you capture the essence of your subject and ignore some of the other possibly distracting elements. I thought it was interesting that before adding the dark shadow between his teeth, his mouth looks shut. But after I add the shadow, it becomes very clear. I think that's a perfect example of how getting your values correct, getting your lights and darks correct is so important. When they aren't good, your painting can play tricks with your brain and you'll get confused. Cause I know, I know I do. Also, my wrist got messy because I was wiping paint off of my brush down there on the paper towel where I rest my wrist. So, note to self, don't do that again.
The reason one tooth looks darker is because he bonked it at some point in time. So I assume it's damaged, but isn't that just so typical of most children? I wanted to include that, as well as the little bumps on those brand new bottom teeth that were coming in. And the final touch was the best part of creating this painting for me. The joy of messy ice cream cone on a hot day at the beach. It was just the epitome of childhood. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching my video. I hope you learned along with me, and I know that I learn a lot more every time I paint. I was inspired to paint this picture of my son while I was reading a book called Daily Painting by Carol Marine. She featured a painting by another artist whose name is Felicia Marshall. This painting is called Glasses, What Glasses? And I just loved how fun it was. Again, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great week.